place by me. Yes, let me explain, first of all. I'm using two yeah. letters today to learn this other to say. It's our way we draw the line. So I'm going to go over this here. I'm going to put this picture up in. I'm going to ask you, yes, you do. I can do it. What about that check? Let's go. That's pretty outrageous. And I'm supposing that in either one it would have been. It has to be where quantum mechanics goes wrong. Okay, everything I think that there is a very good reason why space is three-dimensional and time is one-dimensional. But this is a very personal reason in the sense that I have for many years tried to develop a theory which is called twister theory, which has, I mean, there are versions of twister theory for all different dimensions, but three space dimensions and one time dimension is, has very particular characteristics, and the other dimensions will not work. So if twister theory has a fundamental role to play in physical theory, which I hope, then space has to be three dimensional and time one dimensional. If you have two-dimensional time or something, then you can do loops and things. And, and you certainly have nothing like the kind of causality notions that we have in ordinary physics. In ordinary physics, you imagine things, you don't get causal loops. That is, it's like time machines. You, you can have a time machine <laughs> which enables you to travel into the past if you had a time machine which enabled you to travel into the past, you could produce contradictory things. You could produce, do something which never happened. And this leads problems. And if you have two-dimensional time, you already have such problems, even without any, I mean, the closed loops are already there. So, so they're, they're, these issues are, are, the physics would be so different from what we understand by physics that it's not anything like, uh, uh, a scheme. It's nothing like the idea of physics that we know now. If you ask me what is quantum gravity, which is a subject of a sort, which many people do in the world, which is bringing together quantum mechanics and usually Einstein's general theory of relativity, and having to change Einstein's general theory of relativity because quantum mechanics requires classical theories to be modified in a certain way according to quantum mechanics. Now my view is that is wrong when you are trying to bring gravity and quantum mechanics together because I believe that quantum mechanics itself is self-inconsistent and that to make it free of such inconsistencies one needs to change quantum mechanics. Now, I have reasons to believe that gravity is the place where these changes must come, across, come, up, come about. So that quantum gravity, or whatever that theory of bringing quantum mechanics and gravitational theory together, will not be a quantum theory in ordinary sense. It will be a different kind of theory. So I think quantum gravity or quantum space-time is not the right kind of theory. It's some kind of modified version of quantum mechanics, some more general theory which has as limits, one of the limits will be conventional quantum mechanics, another limit will be conventional general relativity according to Einstein. These are both approximations. There will be some scheme which modifies both of them, not just one, that's the difference. See, I say that quantum mechanics must also be modified. So it will not be a quantum theory in the ordinary sense of that term. But let me mention one thing. You see, in quantum mechanics, it has this feature which is called linearity. That means you can, it's a very simple kind of structure, and it's not a usual kind of thing in physics. Newton's theory was linear in the sense that gravitational fields add together. So if you had one gravitational field and another one and another one, you can add them all together and have the resulting gravitational field. Einstein's theory is nonlinear, that you can't do that. When you try to bring one together with another, there are modifications which are nonlinear. 
Now, I think quantum mechanics must be nonlinear. Present day quantum mechanics, I mean, the correct quantum mechanics must be nonlinear. The present quantum mechanics is linear. And that seems to me to be a very strong statement, which is highly unlikely to be true on a big level. And the paradoxes that you get, Schrodinger's cat and that sort of thing, come about through the linearity of quantum mechanics. And so if you introduce the right kind of nonlinearity, then maybe these problems will be resolved. But we don't know that theory. We don't know such a theory yet. Well, there are a lot of speculations people make about going through black holes into maybe re-emerging somewhere else. All that we understand about general relativity says this does not happen. If you fall into a black hole, you will encounter a singularity which will destroy everything. Destroy yourself and your spaceship and everything. And you will not be able to get into another, come out somewhere else. This is a nice, it would be a nice idea for science fiction to enable people to go through into one black hole and reappear out of another one. But unfortunately, these ideas are not supported by our present understanding of gravity, gravitational theory. I mean, they may be wrong, and maybe some new theory will enable this to happen. I think it's most unlikely, because not only does it go against current theory, it leads you into areas where you could have paradox. So there is a great danger of paradoxical time travel type situations which could, could be, uh, lead you into serious problems with, with the believability of the physics. Well, I think Einstein's theory, including his own modification, I would say, which he thought was a mistake at one point, namely the introduce, introduction of the cosmological constant. And Einstein's theory of 1917, where he introduced the notion of a cosmological constant, seems to fit with all we know about physics, now about cosmology. Now, I should maintain that I have been promoting a theory which, in a certain sense, goes beyond that, where the Big Bang, which is normally regarded as a singularity back through which you cannot go, so it would say it is the beginning. And according to the scheme I'm proposing, no, it's not the beginning. It is you go through, and there was a, a, what I call an eon. Black holes, it has to do with the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics asserts, roughly speaking, randomness increases with time. Now, inside a black hole, you have the most random thing you can possibly have. You have space-time, which is a completely chaotically churned up in a great mess, completely different from what the Big Bang was like. Because if you say, OK, what's the second law of thermodynamics says? It gets, things get more random. Go back in time, things get less random. So therefore, the Big Bang must be a highly organized structure. Now, it was very random with regard to all the material that was in that early universe. As the observations of the microwave background tell us, it was thermal, very random. However, the gravitational degrees of freedom were not activated for some strange reason. So you have to explain why that was the case. Now, the scheme I'm proposing does contain something of a slight extension of Einstein's theory. The extension is extremely mild. It only really tells you what to do in two situations. One is with the very special kind of Big Bang that we seem to have, you can kind of stretch it out, and it still makes sense. And the other is what happens in the very remote future when there is a positive value to Einstein's cosmological constant with the accelerated exponential expansion. Again, you can apply a similar trick, and you can squash that down, and the squashed infinity becomes the stretched Big Bang of the next eon. The only extension you need to Einstein is just to accommodate that joining of one to the next. But it's a very mild, it's almost completely following Einstein. So anything else? I'm <laughs> you see, I don't see the reason for it usually. People, people do make modifications of Einstein's theory. Um, 
one of these things is to try to explain dark matter. You see, dark matter is material substance, apparently, which is out there, which uh, people don't know what it is. It's invisible, invisible matter, really. Now, some people say, well, maybe it's not really there. It is a modification of Einstein's theory. This has many difficulties, because there are observations of colliding galaxies and things like this, which really seem to confirm that the dark matter really is there. When I come back to my scheme, it so happens that the equations demand that there is some scalar material created in each new Big Bang. So each time, you need something like dark matter. It has to be there. Otherwise, the equations are not consistent. <laughs>